Hi, my name is Yuki. I went to Harvard and these are all the things I learned too late while at Harvard. There's a difference between what you're actually interested in and what you wish you were interested in. So I would tell myself, you don't need to come off and pretend you're more intellectual than you are. Just take the classes that sound fun to you. The easiest way to tell if you actually like what a class is covering is if you've already read or heard of some of the materials on the class syllabus. When I was a freshman, we had to pick a writing seminar to take. I was choosing between a seminar on ethics and morality and one about how madness slash mental health is represented in films. The class syllabus for the films class included watching Silence of the Lambs and Donnie Darko. Both were movies that I had already watched before. I took the ethics and morality class because I wanted to be a deep thinker who was interested in discussing topics of morality. I didn't like the readings or discussions, and the teacher didn't like my essays that much either, so it wasn't an easy grade for me. I always wondered if I would have a better time at the madness and films class, and I wondered if I would connect better with the people who took that class. Remember, college is also about the network, and so think about the conversations you want to have outside of class. It sounds a lot more fun to me to fangirl about Donnie Darko than it is to discuss whether or not there's a universal concept of morality. Also, don't rely on the reviews when it comes to subjective things like if a class is good or easy. It really depends on who's writing the review, and because the reviews are anonymous, you don't have the context to know what easy or good means to the person writing the review unless they're incredibly specific. The other reason I took the ethics and morality class was because it had so many reviews that said it was easy and good. And there were no reviews for the madness in film class because it was the first year that it was being offered. I wish I took a chance on that madness in film class. The next lesson is about competition. For some writing seminars, you had to apply in order to get in by sending a writing sample. At the time, I didn't have a writing sample that I felt proud to share. The point of taking a fiction writing class at Harvard was so that I could learn how to write stories. But the whole application process intimidated me too much, and then I got scared of being judged by my classmates. So then I didn't want to take classes where people I knew and talked to every day would be judging my writing. That's when I started looking at cross-registering at MIT. At MIT, there was also a short stories writing class, but you didn't have to apply to get it. You didn't have to send a writing sample. It was based on a lottery system, so it was pure luck if there was space in the class. And actually, so many people lotteried that they brought on a second teacher to teach the class, so that everybody who tried to get into the class got a spot. That short stories class was the most fun class I took all of senior year. I felt like I could be completely free in what I wrote, and I didn't feel self-conscious at all. It may be unfair, but I believe that my Harvard classmates would be expecting more hoity-toity literary fiction, and so would the professor. So I just didn't think that my short stories would fit in with what other people would submit in class. And at MIT, I was just more comfortable with the types of writing that people were submitting, which is more science fiction and genre fiction. Plus, the teacher, Sherry Ann Lewitt, was a published science fiction writer and also had a second line of books that was paranormal romance, which was more in line with what I wanted to write, which was erotica. The erotic story that I submitted to class, I still can't believe that I had the confidence to submit that unhinged piece of writing because my classmates had to read it and critique it, and they were really kind, gave me really good feedback. At the end of the semester, I made some edits, submitted it, and got it published in a erotic anthology. I'm so grateful that they actually gave me good feedback and didn't roast me. I was really happy with the outcome of that class because I got something published and so soon after writing it, so that was a really good feedback loop. I wish I had taken more classes at MIT because they're not graded. They're always pass-fail on your transcript, so they don't count against your GPA. That's the perfect time to take a risk and challenge yourself. I loved my how to make video games class that I took at MIT. I also wish that I had taken my Intro to Computer Science class at MIT too, instead of CS50, which I took at Harvard. You can take CS50 online for free now. And you'll notice it's really splashy, flashy, the instructor can get pretty physical with demonstrations. I remember walking into the lecture hall and there would be techno music pumping like I was going into a club. I thought it was too much, and I still fell asleep during class. Plus, I got a B in that class, and I had to work so hard all the semesters afterwards to fix up my GPA. I wish I had taken that class pass fail and at MIT, because I prefer the MIT professor's dry lecture style. No gimmicks, just straight facts. Both CS50 and X10 are way too hyped up. Don't take it just because everyone else is taking it, and it's one of those classes you have to take. You don't have to do anything. Another lesson about competition is when it comes to joining clubs outside of classes. For some clubs, like the Crimson Newspaper, you have something called a comp. A comp stands for either competition or competency. 
It's basically a series of tasks and assignments that you have to complete within a certain period of time, usually within a semester. Just remember, no club is so cool that you have to sacrifice your self-esteem or grades to get into it. For the Crimson, you needed to write something like 12 articles in a semester. And for the Lampoon, you needed to submit humor pieces. Just remember, clubs should be a source of fun, not stress. I got really caught up trying to prove myself to increasingly exclusive clubs, and my favorite club that I ended up joining wasn't exclusive at all. Senior spring, I joined the Harvard College Stand-Up Comic Society, HC Sucks for short, which I think they were just being cheeky. What I liked about it was that there was no assignments, no assessments, no barrier to entry. You just showed up, brought your jokes, people would give you feedback or help you punch it up, and then you could actually perform in the show at the end of the year. I performed in the senior show and had a ton of fun, which was great because I only showed up to one meeting at the very end of the semester, super randomly, and they still let me to have three minutes and I had never tried or proved myself to them before. I felt very welcome, which I didn't feel in a lot of other clubs with the tryout process. Another tip, everyone knows that when you get to Harvard, you become a small fish because everyone around you is so spectacular at what they do. But you can find the areas where you will stay the big fish in the small pond. Your superpower are things that are easy for you but hard for others. So find places where you can flex those superpowers. And don't listen to people who complain about how hard a comp is. You're just gonna psych yourself out. Instead, do what's easy for you. I know a girl who got into the Lampoon as a freshman her very first try for art. She later said, I didn't even know that it was supposed to be really competitive and that most freshmen don't get in on their first try. She just did her art and had a good time. And that's because she was a big fish in that pond. And there have been lots of studies that have said it's better for your self-esteem and motivation to be a big fish. So when you're at Harvard, try to find those small ponds. Your self-esteem will thank you later. On to social tips. Before freshman year starts, you fill out this survey and it's for your resident advisor to pair you with roommates. It's mostly multiple choice, but then at the end, there is a section for free text. And that's when you can describe your ideal roommate situation. A friend of mine described his ideal freshman roommate as a big partier. He wanted a wild freshman year. And the resident advisor came through for him. To give you an idea of who he ended up rooming with, all of his roommates the next year got punched for final clubs. Tip, when you're filling out that survey, put down the truth about what you want. If you want a crazy freshman year because you want a bunch of social partiers and you want to break out of your shell, go for it. It doesn't mean that you're going to get what you asked for, but you also don't have anything to lose. And it's not like the resident advisor lives in the dorms with you, so they can't keep that close of an eye. For me, I wrote down that I wanted roommates that were sociable and wanted to host salons, which was just a highbrow way of saying I wanted roommates to throw parties with me and make it classy. Think cocktails, not kegs. Okay, so I mostly learned the trade-offs of going to a super elite institution and followed that by graduating and joining another super elite institution called the Goldman Sachs. So if you want to hear about what I learned there, let me know. So I hope this helped and if you're coming into Harvard, just remember, you worked really hard to get into this college, so you're already coming in with a lot to offer and you're already enough as you are. Enjoy! Thanks for watching!